Okay, so zero factor property. This is the basis of what we use to solve quadratic equations. Um, and if you have to go on to college algebra, you'll be using this a lot. So I feel like we're solving quadratic equations. So a quadratic equation is any equation where the highest exponent on a variable is 2. So that's how you can identify if it is quadratic or not. And they're called second degree equations because the degree of the polynomial is 2. Okay. Now I always wondered, like when I hear the word quad, I think 4. So I'm like, well, why is it called a quadratic equation if they have an exponent of 2? So I actually looked up on Google <laughs> where the word comes from. And uh, so I, I included the picture here. So apparently it comes from Latin, which means make square. And so that's why it's called a quadratic, because uh -huh. you're squaring things. Uh -huh. So it has nothing to do with the word Four. Now, a square has four sides, which is why quad is used for four, but it comes right. from a Latin word meaning square. So I thought that was interesting because I've always wondered, I'm like, this doesn't make any sense to me. So now it does make sense. <laughs> <laughs> you would think that quad would mean four instead of the variable would be two. Yeah, that would have been, I was questionable about that also. Yeah. Right, yeah, because it's just like when you're trying to remember these things, you'd be like, well, aren't I looking for something with a 4? But no, you're looking for 2 because it's square. So, exactly. hopefully that will help. Thank you. So, standard form of a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. So, when we learned about factoring of these quadratics, we didn't have the equal 0 part. Um, we always want to have them equal zero because that's how we're allowed to solve. So if you okay. have something with an x squared and it's not equal to zero, you have to make it equal to zero first by rearranging things before you can do anything else. So it's different from a linear equation because in linear equations, you don't want everything on the same side. You're trying to get things on the okay. other side. So it's, right. it's a different process here. Now, not every quadratic looks exactly like that. So I did put here some additional things that um, forms that you might see that are still quadratic. Like maybe you only have an x squared and you don't have the other terms. Or maybe okay. you're missing the middle. Or maybe you're missing the last term. These last two are tricky because you look at them and you don't see any exponents of two, but when you distribute right. them out, that's when you get an exponent of two. So those are tricky because they are actually still quadratic or just in factored form versus the multiplied out form. Gotcha. Yeah, so, um, and that's the form that we want them to be in when we start solving. So we basically take the form where everything's multiplied out and then we factor it into these two bottom forms so that way we can solve and it makes things a lot easier. Okay. So the zero product rule is very, very simple. It's basically if you have two things multiplied and they equal to zero, so A times B equals zero, then mm -hmm. either A is equal to zero or B is equal to zero. Because when we multiply, if in, when you do multiplication, if your answer is zero, one of those numbers has to be zero. Because right. anything times zero is zero. We just don't know which one. We don't know if it's A that's zero or B that is zero. So we get two possible answers here. Gotcha. So we use this with quadratics because an x squared means you have two things multiplied together at x times x. So we're going to get two solutions here with the, when we solve a quadratic because of this. Okay. Um, so when we factor using the, the zero product rule, and, and it's not just factoring, actually, I should have wrote solving, not factoring. Solving using 
the zero product rule. So these are the steps that we do when we have a quadratic. So it's four steps, although factoring might be more steps depending on whether you guys have gotten good at it or not, whether you can do it in your head or you still need to do more steps. So step one is to first make everything so it's equal to zero. So you have to add and subtract so that everything's on the same side. Step two is then to factor what you have on that left side, or it could be on the right side, depending on how you solved it. But you want to factor that quadratic part. And your goal is to get it in the form where you have those two parentheses multiplied, and you still have the equal zero at the end, because it's still an equation. So um, that factoring stuff, so that was last week. So I'm going to just make a little note here. Week five, so if you need some practice on factoring some more, you can go back to your week five stuff. Um, step three then is this is where we use the zero factor property. If I spelled that right. Is you set each of those factors equal to zero. So you have the things in parentheses and you make two equations out of those so that you have two equations equal to zero. These are linear equations, so now we, these are easier to solve. So we're basically taking a quadratic and rewriting it in a way so that we have linear and then we can just solve for x. And so then step four is to solve those equations for x and you'll get two answers. Um, quadratics always have two answers. Now you may have two of the same answer, like they may be the same number, but you always have two answers when you're solving. So that is that is something to remember, is basically the exponent tells you how many answers you're going to have. So a linear equation is basically an exponent of one. We got one answer when we solve those. Quadratic has an exponent of two, you get two answers. So if you follow that, if you see something that's like x to the five, there's five answers to that equation. So this is the procedure that we're going to follow. I'm going to start simple. I'm going to start with things that are already factored and then show how we can solve from there. And then we're going to go into examples where they're not factored and we have to factor first. So I'm going to start basically um, with step three for the first few examples and then we'll, you know, ramp it up. So on the left here, we have something that is already factored, and this is a quadratic equation, because if you multiply it out, if you do FOIL, you'll get something that's x squared. So when we use the zero factor property, we set each set of parentheses equal to zero. And when you do that, you don't need the parentheses anymore. So we get two equations. We get 2x minus 5 equals to zero, and x plus one equal to zero. And so now we solve both of those equations for x to get our two answers. So I'm going to solve the one on the left first. So I need to add five to both sides because I want to get the x by itself. And this gives me two x equals five. And then we divide both sides by 2, so I can get that x. And we get a fraction. We're going to leave it in fraction form. And so we get x is equal to 5 halves. Now the second equation here, I want to subtract 1 from both sides. And this gives me x is equal to negative 1, and then there's my second answer. So when it's factored, you just set each factor equal to 0 and solve for x. And you'll see, I mean, what we're doing this week is starting where we're taking quadratics and turning them into linear equations. But if you have to go on to college algebra and you go into higher levels of algebra, you'll see that basically the goal is to try to turn everything into a linear equation at some point. And so, you know, the more complicated equations, you, you try to manipulate it to get to a point where you can get it to linear. So it's like we're all, we're, we're learning new techniques. Okay. 
to constantly break things down to linear. So this is just the start, like the, the basic. Let's take something with two, turn it into linear. But college algebra, you start learning things with fractions, um, with, with variables and fractions. You have things with square roots, with variables inside square roots. There's so many different other types of equations, but you learn, you always eventually get it down to okay. a linear equation. So uh, let's look at my second example here. We have a negative one times x minus two, and then four x plus seven equals zero. Now we've got our two things with x, there's two sets of parentheses. When you have a number in front, you don't have to do anything with that because mm -hmm. like if you set it equal to zero, you just get negative one equals zero and it doesn't really mean anything. So you only need right. to take the things with the, the variables. So we have x minus 2 equal to 0, and then 4x plus 7 equal to 0. So solving the x minus 2 is pretty simple. We just get x equals 2. And then the 4x plus 7, that's another one that's going to get us a fraction. Because so first we need to subtract 7 from both sides. So 4x equals negative 7. And then if we divide both sides by 4, we get x equals negative 7 over 4. When you check your answers here, you want to check them back into the original equation. Um, when you have fractions, it does get kind of annoying to check your answers. So um, exactly. I would make sure you have a fraction or make sure you have a calculator that can do fractions because that will make checking your answers a lot easier. Because <laughs> then you can just put the okay. fraction in a calculator. <laughs> um, one thing is when I first learned how to do this, the, the step that I missed when I was learning to do this was the solving for x part. And so, like, when I learned how to do this, I was like, how are people getting, like, x equals negative 7 fourths? And so I was, like, trying to figure out, like, oh, okay. And I was looking at my factors, and I'm like, okay, I've got the opposite of a sign. You know, like, we have a 4x plus 7, so I know my answer is going to be negative. It's going to be the opposite. And then I was like, oh... I was trying to figure this out. I was like, oh, maybe it's this number on top of this number, you know, 7 over 4, and then I've got that negative. And if you think of it that way, this is going to be positive, which is the opposite of the negative. It would be 2 over 1, and our answer is 2. So in my head, because I didn't really learn how to do this, I was trying to find the pattern of the answers. Um, and this will work every time, this little shortcut thing that I figured out, but it is best to show your work and to actually do the solving because that way you're less likely to make mistakes. But when I was learning this, I somehow missed this whole process and was trying to figure it out. And I was like, well, how can I get the answer from here? <laughs> so that was what I came up with, and it does work every time. Okay, so here's a couple more. These are already factored set equal to zero. So I have the x plus 5 times x plus 5 equals zero. So this, we have two factors here, and actually sometimes you can see this written as x plus 5 squared equal to zero. And if you see it written with that squared, you just want to go back to the original where something squared is two things multiplied together. So actually, let's write this up on top so you can see that. So if you see like something squared, you can write out those two multiplications so that you have it in this form. And then we set each factor equal to zero. And you'll notice, because these are the exact same thing, we're going to get the same answer for both equations, because they're both x plus 5. So 
I just subtract 5, and I'm just going to do it on both sides because these are the exact same equation. And we get x equals negative 5, and then also x equals negative 5. We get the same answer. So we get two answers, but they're the same number. So what we usually do in this case, this is what's called a double root, a special name, because it's, it's called a, so root is just when you solve something for, for you set it equal to zero, solve for x, it's a root of an equation. It's just another term. Double just here means that there's two. It's, it shows up twice. Um, but when we write your answer, your final answer, you only need to write it once. So like sometimes instead of doing the x equals like I do, we'll write it in set notation. And so you can just write one single number there. You don't have to write it twice or twice. You can just put it once because it shows the same number, you know. So I, I but think if we would put it twice, right, we get that problem wrong, like on a quiz, if we were to write it twice, would that be wrong? Um, and Alex, yes. <laughs> Alex will mark you wrong if okay. you write it twice. <laughs> yeah. Now, if okay. I was, if you were like, you know, in a classroom and you wrote it twice, I would not mark mm -hmm. you wrong. But Alex isn't smart enough okay. to figure that out. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> gotcha. So you got to be very careful about that. But if you do get it wrong, in, or not in Alex, it's next math. But if you do get it wrong in the online system, when you turn in your work, we can correct that. You know, that's the whole reason for okay. turning in your work. Then we can be like, oh, no, you just wrote it twice. We can give you full credit, you know? <laughs> okay, gotcha. Um, let's look at this equation on the right. So we've got x times x minus 3 equals 0. So even though that x in front is not in parentheses, it still gets set equal to zero because it has a variable. And so that actually gives us one answer right away because we just set up the equation x equals zero. <laughs> we have an answer. Second one here, we have 4x minus 3 equals zero, and then that's what we need to go and solve. So I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Four x equals three, and then divide both sides by four. We we'll get x equals three fourths as our other answer. So, um, in the, in the homework system, you will just put these numbers in with commas. So, I think. I don't think you have to actually enter in the curly braces. They may put them in there already for you, but you just you just put in each number with commas. You don't have to say x equals. You can just put in the numbers and just separate them by commas, and that's how you would enter it in online. And I don't think the order matters. The system is smart enough to know that the numbers are there, even if the order is wrong or different or all. So. So we got, again, two answers, zero and three-fourths. Okay, so those are the most basic, I shouldn't say basic, because they're not basic. Those are like, you know. No, they're not basic. <laughs> yeah, they're not basic. They're, they're the traditional quadratics. But okay. sometimes you see things that don't look quadratic, we can still use the zero factor property. We're ex it's like we're extending it out. So you may see some of this on your homework. They are in um, that some big problems in the textbook here. So where they may have not be quadratic, but like have an, something cubed, or you mm -hmm. may have multiple things multiplied together. You know, like the second line, I've got three things multiplied together. Right. Um, the third line is quadratic, but only when you multiply it out. It doesn't look like it. And the bottom one is something that, like, oh, I've got four things here. You know, these are not in the right form. But we can still solve these with the skills that you've learned for quadratics. You just okay. have to, you know, you just have to do a couple other things. You just have to say, well, what do I know? And you can still solve them. Okay. So I'm going to start with 
the easiest sort of type where it's already factored out. Okay. So all the examples we've done has had two sets of parentheses multiplied out. The zero factor property doesn't, you know, it doesn't say you can only use this with two things, two numbers multiplied together. Okay. If you have three numbers multiplied together, it still equals zero. If you have four numbers multiplied together and equals zero, like the something still has to be zero in there. So when you have something like this, where we've got this negative three x, and then we've got x minus one, x plus seven, three x minus five, we can still use the zero factor property. You basically take anything that has an x and you set it equal to zero. So I have my negative three x equate part that I set equal to zero. I have x minus one that I set equal to zero. X plus seven is equal to zero and three x minus five equals to zero. So even though there's not two of them, we can still use the same rule and you can see we're going to get four answers here because we've got four different equations. And so we just solve each of these equations for x. So like that first one, when I divide both sides by negative three, zero divided by anything is zero. So my first answer is going to be x equals zero. Move on to the second equation. I'm going to add one to both sides. And I get x equals one. That's my second answer. Third equation here, subtract seven from both sides. I get x equals negative seven. And then my fourth equation. A few more steps here. So first I have to add that five. I get px equals five. And then we divide both sides by three. And we get x is equal to five thirds, and that's our fourth answer. So even though this is not quadratic, it's got four things, which um, quadratics have two, we can still use what we've learned to solve this. Because it follows the same rules. You set the factors equal to zero, and then you solve. So we can still solve it, and we get four different answers instead of two different answers. Um, but it's really, you know, not that, not that hard. And when it's, when it's pre-factored, you know, factored out like this, it's like, oh, that's not too bad at all. It's just, you just follow the same rules. 